Good day, here are the top stories for today from the Philippine News Agency. We begin with the latest OCTA research survey showing improved ratings of President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. In the latest Tugonang Masa survey conducted by Okta Research from June 30 to July 5, it shows that President Marcos' trust rating rose to 71% up from 69% in the second quarter of 2024. However, Vice President Sara Z. Duterte saw her trust rating drop by 3 points to 65% from 68%. Okta says this is the first time in three years that President Marcos has surpassed Duterte in both trust and performance. The survey shows that Marcos' improved trust score was due to an 8% increase in Mindanao, Duterte's bailwick to 56% from 48%. Marcos received the highest trust rating in Luzon with 80%, while Metro Manila followed closely at 70% and Visayas at 69%. Marcos' trust rating also rose among adult Filipinos in Class ABC with a 22-point boost to 74%, followed by 71% in Class D and 66% in Class E. His performance rating increased by 3% to 68% from 65% in the first quarter of 2024. Luzon leads Marcos' approval ratings at 75%, while Mindanao has seen an 8-point increase to 56%. Metro Manila had an approval rating of 68%, while Visayas had a rate of 65%. Among ABC class, Marcos' approval rating increased by 11 points to 71%, while classes D and D showed ratings of 68 and 64% respectively. Meanwhile, Duterte's trust rating in Mindanao remained the highest, increasing by 9 percentage points to 95%. However, her trust rating in Visayas is at 66%, followed by NCR at 60% and Balance Luzon at 52%. Likewise, Vice President Sara Duterte saw declines in her performance ratings across all regions with the largest drops in Metro Manila by 6 percentage points, down to 50% from 56% and in the Visayas by 4 points, falling to 60% from 64%. While her performance remained strong in Mindanao at 92%, it was lowest in Balance Luzon at 48%. The poster says this marks the second consecutive quarter in 2024 where Vice President Duterte's trust and performance ratings have continued to trend downward. A special envoy dismissed accusations linking controversial businesswoman Catherine Cassandra Lee Ong to President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. and First Lady Lisa Araneta Marcos, particularly after a photo of them surfaced during a press conference. In an interview, Benito Techico, the President's Special Envoy to China for Trade, Tourism and Investment, clarified that the President has no connection to Ong. Techico explains that the photo was taken sometime after the COVID-19 lockdown in 2020 during one of their dinners when the restaurant owner requested a picture with a Marcus couple along with other diners in Pasay City. Techico said he only found out that Ong was in the photo after it was made public by lawyer Ferdinand Topacio in a press conference. Techico says he has yet to discuss the matter with the president but he felt compelled to defend him against unfair and foul accusations linking the president to Ong, who had been associated with illegal pogo operations in the country. He says Topasha's accusation is 100% contrary to what really happened, as the president and the first lady have no connection to Ong. Ong and Sheila Guo, sister of dismissed Bamban Tarlac Mayor Alice Guo, were arrested by Indonesian authorities last week and were sent back to the Philippines. The Commission on Elections has removed almost 694,000 registered voters from the official voters list ahead of the 2025 midterm elections. The bulk of this figure, or over 249,000 voters, were erased after their deaths were certified 
by their local civil registers. Over 220,000 were deleted after they transferred to another city or municipality. About 179,000 voters were identified to have double registration by the automated fingerprint identification system. The COMELEC also cancelled about 42,000 voters who applied to vote overseas. It also deleted over 2,100 double entries. The poll body earlier logged over 67.8 million registered voters during the 2023 Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan elections. Meanwhile, the COMELEC insists that the scheduled filing of candidacy for the midterm polls on October 1-8 to this year stays. COMELEC Chair George Irwin Garcia opposed the proposal of Manila Representative Bienvenido Abante Jr. to delay the deadline for the purpose to December 8, noting that this may affect their preparations for the simultaneous holding of the midterm polls and the first Bangsamoro parliamentary elections. He says they need more time for the printing of at least 70 million ballots, including precinct-specific ballots that have the names of all the candidates. Abante is pushing to reschedule the COC filing deadline, saying this will give candidates sufficient time to prepare and decide on the polls. Authorities have arrested 18 members of the Kingdom of Jesus Christ amid continuing police operations in the religious groups compound in Davao City. The Police Regional Office 11 dispersed the group's rally in front of the compound on Monday afternoon and removed their barricade, which was blocking the National Highway. The 18 arrested members are facing complaints of obstruction of justice. PNP spokesperson Colonel Jean Fajardo reported that at least seven police personnel were wounded since the start of the standoff over the weekend saying KOJC members attacked cops and threw monoblock chairs at them. She slammed misinformation spread by the KOJC that seven people have died and scores were wounded as police entered the compound. Meanwhile, additional charges are being prepared against those behind the detention of two suspected human trafficking victims inside the compound. Police rescued a 20-year-old male and a 51-year-old female and turned them over to their families. Last Saturday, about 2,000 police went to the KOJC compound to serve a warrant of arrest against fugitive Pastor Apollo Kibuloy. The KOJC members, however, blocked the police and started the rally. Kibuloy and five other members are facing charges of child and sexual abuse and human trafficking. Quezon City Mayor Joy Belmonte has called on the city's residents and business owners to cooperate with contract tracing efforts amid reported MPOX cases in the city. The city government earlier closed down the Fahrenheit Cafe and Fitness Center or F-Club in E. Rodriguez Senior Avenue for refusing to help the city's contact tracing team as it launched an investigation last Saturday. The LGU has since issued a cease and desist order and notice of a violation against the fitness club. Belmonte said the establishment's rejection of contact tracing is a threat to the safety and welfare of the city's residents. She urged business owners to work closely with authorities in addressing public health concerns. The Quezon City government closed down last week a spa that operated without the necessary permits after it was reported as among establishments that the country's 10th MPOX case visited. The 33-year-old patient also visited a derma clinic which has since undergone contact tracing. At least 28 contacts have been placed under self-quarantine. And that's the latest and the biggest stories on the PNA headlines. For more news updates, visit our website pna.gov.ph or our Facebook and X account, Philippine News Agency. The PNA headlines is also streamed via the Servicio Facebook page. You may also watch the PNA headlines through the Philippine News Agency's YouTube account and via the News and Information Bureau website under PNA News. I'm Marita Mwahe. This is the PNA Headlines, bringing stories that unite the nation.